Like they love each other. Cool, cool. I can't relate either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's an innovator, a visionary, <laughs> trendsetter, entrepreneur, CEO of Chopsticks with Tacos. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another a uh, dun dun a pizza mukbang. Woo! Woo! Guys, today's gonna get a little bit wild because I decided to browse on my food delivery service apps like I do. Um, it's like my form of online shopping, and I realized, wait a second. Taco Bell mm -hmm. does have two new items and they're finally available where I live and we've got the Flamin' Hot Dorito Tacos Locos Tacos that was very That's repetitive so I know and then this one is the one that I've been waiting for for like weeks which is the Tripa Lupa it's your Chalupa that you love you triple it Tripa Lupa I'm tripped out <laughs> so you just like instead of order three you order one but, you know, That's I feel smart. like these shells are really small because they're normally the size of this. So technically, uh, it's not really a triple loopa, mm -hmm. but like... They just say it. Yeah. So, yeah. like, so what's I'm the gonna difference start... with these? Like, more spicy? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to go for a triple loopa. I'm so Damn. sorry. What? That's one? This is one. It's a triple loopa. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay. I mean, right. normally you're supposed to tear it apart, but I'm a so that savage, big bite. you so know? That big bite. Holy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Is it good? Mm. You good? Mm-hmm. All right, then. Yeah. I'm gonna try the Dorito one. Yeah, I'm gonna try oh my God. these first. It's so good. What the heck? So mm -hmm. I have a theory, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything at Taco Bell tastes the same. <laughs> no, man, I seriously. Wow. Every single item has the same flavor. That's, yeah. Everything's kind of similar. That's the ingredients are kind of mm. similar, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it's so spicy. All right, let me try it, try it, try it. Mmm. Oh, it's actually spicy. I didn't think it was gonna be. Mm, this one's good. This mm. might be the best mm. one. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. This one is about 10% different flavor. Mm. <laughs> so does this come like every season or what? No, I think it's completely new. He was so shook, his lettuce dropped. <laughs> his lettuce said, I'm leaving the chat. Ooh. Wow, it's spicy. Okay, mm. guys, try the triple lupa and let me know what you think. So, if you want to take it apart, they said it's very easy to rip apart, and now you've got a mini chalupa. That's cute. Mm hmm. Mm. So, like, you just do Ooh. this. Okay, so it's like a mini bite. Mm hmm. Oh, that's wow. good. It's good. This one's good. Mm -hmm. Which one's better for you? I like the chalupa. What? All right, let's see. Wow. What do you think? Which one do you like? Holy shit. Chalupa. Wow. It's saucy, right? Mm -hmm. mm. They're both pretty good, though. Mm. This mm. is a success. Was the I was triple, nervous. triple chalupa affordable? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Five dollars per lupa, triple lupa. Five dollar foot long. Mm-hmm. That's worth. Worth. How about this? It's like a three dollars right? each. Really? Mm-hmm. Isn't that kind of pricey? Yeah, for it's sure. One. I don't know. Understand what the difference between? I mean, I can taste the difference in terms. Of this is spicier between mm -hmm. the fiery taco and mm -hmm. this flame and hot taco. Mm-hmm. Is this like a collab with Doritos for them? They've always had a collab with Doritos. Mm -hmm. The Cool Ranch, the Nacho Cheese the, Taco. They have a cheesy one too, I think. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Mm. Interesting. I'm so confused about the Doritos and Cheetos universe. I thought Flame and Hot was Cheetos. You should collab with the uh, Hot Cheetos. Mm. Oh yeah. But is Doritos and Cheetos owned by the same maker, same parent company, like Frito Lay or something? No, right? You don't think so? No, I don't think so. Yes, they are. For real? Mm-hmm. Packaging says Doritos and Flamin' Hot are um, trademarks of Frito-Lay. So they must own Cheetos, Damn, too. Damn, look at you. I knew it. I knew my snacks. I know my snack aisle. I know Frito-Lay owns that shit, okay? Dang, so they're mm -hmm. pretty big. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. The only knowledge I got. <laughs> You know? <laughs> Here in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get right into the story. Hold on, let me take one more bite. Mm. Wow. Well, it's just kind of spicy. It's really spicy. And crumbles really easily. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Spicy. Mm. Wow. This is not a beer. I swear. 
<laughs> not from a place called I Love Crabs, which could be misinterpreted for a lot of different things. <laughs> what do you mean? Crabs is also an STD, so I'm just saying. <laughs> if you really wanted it to, wow, you've been eating them one by one, mm -hmm. like a class queen. Yeah. I'm about to chopstick this because it's an Asian hack that you chopstick hot Cheetos out of the bag so it doesn't t um, tinge oh, your nails. I saw that. So they get chopsticks and they put it in a chip bag. So I'm gonna. <laughs> you might be the first one to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna create a taco hack. Damn. So smart. Mm hmm. She's an innovator, a visionary, <laughs> trendsetter. Mm hmm. Flamethrower, entrepreneur, CEO of Chopsticks with Tacos. Well. <laughs> Looks kind of smart though. Right? Mm hmm. <laughs> Who's IQ 130? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be me. <laughs> okay. This is about a movie called Searching. Now, have you guys heard of Searching? Have you seen Searching? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's an entire movie that is shot so different from any other movie that I've ever seen in the history of my world, but it made sense. It was actually a really good movie for the way that it was shot, especially because I'm the type that hates these types of movies. You know Dunkirk? I loved Dunkirk, but what I didn't love about Dunkirk is they use like a super wide, like thin, so like when you go to a movie theater, it's like really thin, but it's wide and it doesn't cover the entire screen. Some people were like applauding it. Lots of people were because they were like, this is like an old camera version. Like mm -hmm. it's such beautifully done. Ooh, artsmanship, craftsmanship, ooh, filmography or whatever, right? I found it very frustrating. I found it to be one of the most frustrating parts of that movie. It's like, why can't you just fill up the screen? I don't understand. This entire movie, is shot on a computer. Wait, everything? The whole thing? Wait, is it the movie about... The dad searching for the daughter? Oh, yeah. Oh, searching by... um. John Cho's in it? No, the dad... The yeah. dad actor is... Asian. John Cho? No. Oh, no. Is his name John Cho? Never mind. I'm thinking about something else. Yeah. He's from your favorite sh show, yeah, no? Yeah, Selfie. One of my favorite Selfie? shows back in the day. It's really silly. It's like a really silly... It's like the Mindy Project. It's like just... Stupid. But she loves it. But it's so cute. They love each other. Cool, cool. Can't <laughs> relate. No. Can't relate either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like searching for that type of love, you know? Mm. Good. Me too. <laughs> Honey! The entire movie is shot on a computer. So you watch every scene on a computer. And when you see people communicate, it's through FaceTime. Or you watch the news on your computer. Or you see text messages on the computer, emails, Facebook pages, live streaming. Mm -hmm. You even see the characters like, you know how you when you leave your FaceTime app on? It's still on. Like You can still see you even if you're not talking to anyone. They mm -hmm. use some of that. Very creative, right? Mm -hmm. Do people like that style? Normally, no. But for this movie? They did it really well. You mm. forget that you're like staring at a computer the whole time. Really? Uh-huh. So it's kind of like POV? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Is that kind of like my video? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I am a Korean barbecue server. <laughs> <laughs> you know the movie 1917? 18... Wait, how does it go? 1738. 38. I know that movie. Ooh, 1738. <laughs> okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, what's 1917? Oh, no, it's just a movie, war movie. I didn't, I didn't watch it, but okay. I heard like the, like the, what's it called? The filming? The filming and the tactic and everything mm -hmm. was one take and it was like so good. They got like so much praise because it was like that good. <laughs> That's insane. Oh my god. I don't even think I could do one take of my freaking intro. <laughs> Sometimes I do that shit like 10 times just because I'm like, eh, I'm sure I'll find a good one in 10, you know? And mm -hmm. then I don't and it's like really <laughs> sad. <laughs> the movie Searching opens up with a dad by the name of David, mm -hmm. a mom by the name of Pam, and they had a young daughter by the name of Margot. Now, you see. <laughs> Sorry. What? Not well. Well, it's Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> really? Her name's Margot. Well, not, Fargo. Not Michael or Mango or Wells Fargo. Ah, uh, yeah. Someone really said Wells Fargo. Her name's Margot. Okay, Margot. Wait, I'm gonna head out. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez Louise. Her name is Margot. <laughs> Her name is Margot with the T at the end, okay? You see them open up with one of those old ass.
Windows Explorer, like the old ones, like not the new ones. I'm not bashing Windows or anything like that or a PC, but like the old ones where you get the hills. You know what I'm talking about? You open up, you press start, you log in, and it's like the hills is the screen saver. It's like the Windows, hills. Windows 98. Oh, Windows. Yeah. 98, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Windows. She said this. The hills. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. 98, okay? And so they open it up, and then, you know, David has his own little section, and he goes in and he emails some people about work, and Pam logs onto the computer a lot the mom now what's pam doing on the computer and it seems like she starts making these folders on the computer and it says first day of kindergarten and she'll upload pictures of the entire family at margo's first day of kindergarten she'll mm -hmm. also upload lots and lots of videos of her teaching margo how to play the piano because pam is really good at the piano mm -hmm. and margo loves it you see them celebrate birthdays together you mm -hmm. see them you know put stuff on the calendar of oh a kindergarten graduation day and you just see this all through the laptop you see videos of them playing that they'll mm -hmm. import into the computer save to the files you know mm -hmm. and then you see an email pop up and it says it's from a doctor and it was to Pam and it says that she has breast cancer mm. oh, and then so you'll see a bunch of Google searches of how to beat cancer as a family how to tell your kid you have cancer stuff like that and so you start getting emotionally invested and you realize what are they gonna do and then you start seeing videos being imported of you know David vlogging almost and he's trying to post it onto like Facebook and stuff and he said you know they said exercise is good for recovery we just ran six miles Pam is a beast and they're like high-fiving and then she even did like this whole you know she was cured from cancer everything was good she she recovered and she had like a party about it and everything was going well and then she got another email and all the while this was happening little margo is still getting piano lessons they're still hanging out they're still taking pictures and videos together mm -hmm. and it was going to be margo's first day of high school mm -hmm. when pam gets an email that mm -hmm. says that her scans show that she's relapsing. And so in the first day of high school folder, instead mm -hmm. of uploading a picture like they did with all of the other folders of them in front of the school smiling with Margot in her backpack, it was of Pam in a hospital bed and the dad and Margot smiling. And then it shows Margot opening her own desktop user. And she goes onto Facebook and she makes an account and she posts videos of her playing piano she posts random status updates and you start to get invested in Margot as a girl. And then she has a calendar open and it says, mom is coming home, 10 a.m. It was in like two weeks, like May or uh -huh. something. And then you see after a little while, the calendar gets reopened and she drags it to two weeks later. So uh -huh. she has to stay in the hospital. She's not doing day. well, right? Mm. And then you see her open her calendar again and she deletes the event. So her mom never came home from the hospital. So they tell the they tell the whole story through yeah. these computer like yeah. emailing and stuff. So you never really see them at all. Mm. Like you see the videos of them. Like the only time you see people interacting, like in real time, like not just on a computer or texting, is videos that are uploaded, news that's real time that they're watching on their computer, or FaceTimes. Mm. Wow. So or like Facebook status. Yeah, or, or like something. live streaming. Everything else is like you don't like you don't get to hear their inner that's monologue cool. or anything like but that. It still gets you hooked? Yeah. I was like concerned. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna get hooked because I saw the trailer and I saw mm -hmm. I heard people talking about it prior saying like the whole thing's on a computer a MacBook this entire thing is like the smartest Apple ad right because then it switches to a MacBook but then like I was I thought I wasn't gonna be into it but I got into it oh they switch from Windows to Apple yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they FaceTime and shit and they iMessage and shit so the whole thing was an ad yeah for Apple mm. I know right <laughs> Smart for so my, I'm just kidding. I don't know if they have any involvement, but it'd be entirely genius if they did. You know, and then it cut, it switches to a couple years later, and you see the dad, you see David, and he's on his laptop, and he has his text message with Margot pulled up, and uh -huh. he starts typing like, "Hey, did you forget something?" And you can kind of already see the whole thread, mm -hmm. and it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like a teenage girl and her dad. Like the, it's just the dad constantly texting her and her barely responding, unless she has to. Mm -hmm. And so he says, "Hey, did you?" forget something before you went to school hello are you there where are you now when are you coming home you know and he decides okay you know what I'm just gonna FaceTime her and so he FaceTimes her and he's standing in the kitchen and she picks up and she goes hi like what's going on and he goes did you forget something and she goes what did I forget and he goes 
you forgot to take out the trash and shows the trash and she goes oh my god i'm so sorry i thought i was gonna be late for class mm. that was my bad dad and then he was like well when are you gonna be home and she says probably late right now i'm at a friend's house for um, a study group for biology and he's like oh which friend and then she's like well you don't know her she's from bio and he goes okay well just text me when you're on your way home she goes okay thanks gotta go bye dad right mm -hmm. hangs up the dad just kind of, you know, is standing there with his FaceTime on. It's weird because he leaves his FaceTime on so you can still see him. So it's kind mm. of like a movie. And he's like, huh. So he types in Peter Kim, which we can assume is his brother. And he FaceTimes his brother. And his brother's making something in the kitchen. And he's like, what are you making? And he's like, I'm trying to make that one recipe. What's it called? And he goes, ah, yes. Can you send me the recipe for kimchi gumbo? And so the David is, is like, kimchi gumbo? Oh, yeah, I should have the recipe somewhere. So you see him searching it on his computer, sending it to him through text message and they have a little bit of a disagreement because David sees a little bag of weed in the kitchen from Peter and Peter looks like a full grown man uh -huh. and so he says have you been smoking weed and he goes no I'm just stressed and he goes are you smoking it at work and he's like no I swear anyways I'll just call you later I gotta go okay bye right mm -hmm. and they hang up and he just doesn't know what to do it seems like he's really lonely the dad David and so he goes to his room his FaceTime's on and he falls asleep. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle of the night, his computer lights up. And it's a FaceTime. And you know how when someone calls you on FaceTime, your camera lights up and you see yourself, mm -hmm. but you haven't answered yet? Mm -hmm. And you can see him knocked out on his bed and his computer was left open. Mm -hmm. And it was Marco calling him and calling him and calling him and calling uh -huh. him. And then he woke up the next morning. Uh -huh. And you see him on his computer texting Margot and then sending a picture of the trash that she forgot to take out. And mm. then he calls Margot and leaves a voicemail and says, Margot, I know you're probably already at school, but you need to remember to take out the trash. Like, what's going on? Why didn't you take out the trash, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about it tonight. Call me after school. Mm -hmm. And he goes to work. And you see him at his work computer and he's working on a video conference with a bunch of other people at different headquarters and he seems distracted and everyone's like hey David everything going okay and he goes yeah yeah, yeah it's fine and so they hang up and he goes back into the text messages with Margot and mm -hmm. he's like why isn't she answering me and mm -hmm. he starts typing and deleting he starts typing some angry words like you are being very irresponsible and then he'll delete them and then he's just sitting there like oh, what do I do and then he starts he starts looking at the picture where he sent of the trash mm -hmm. and he's like this bitch Margo, she forgot her freaking computer. She needs her computer at school and she forgot her freaking computer. And so he starts typing, why did you leave your computer at home? What was the point in that? Are you forgetting to bring things to school? What are you gonna do without your computer in school? And just texting her these things. Okay. And she's not responding. Okay. And so he starts getting confused. He's like, what's going on? Why isn't she responding? And so he's like, what day is today? Oh, today's Thursday or something, right? Mm -hmm. Friday, today's Friday. Oh, she has piano lessons after school on Friday. And so he goes through all of his, you know, computer files, finally finds the piano lesson teacher's name, gives her a call. You can hear this because it's FaceTime audio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an ad. <laughs> and, you know, she's like, hi, how can I help you? And he's like, listen, it's David. It's Margot's father. I just wanted to talk for a second. And she was like, well, I'm in the middle of a lesson. And he goes, yeah, I know. Can I just t talk to my daughter for a second? Mm -hmm. She's like, your daughter, Margot? She stopped taking lessons six months ago. Oh. And he goes, what? That can't be. And he goes through his text messages. Mm -hmm. And you'll see, even just a week ago, she, he was giving her $100 a week for piano lessons. Mm. And so he's like, are you positive? Because, I mean, I've been giving her money for piano lessons. And she's like, well, I mean, I have to go even with a student, but if she wants to restart, let me know. And they hang up. And so Damn. he decides to call the school. You can see him Googling the school phone number. And then you can see him texting Peter Kim, his brother, saying, I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. And Peter's like, well, calm down. Like, high schoolers ditch school all the time. It shows, she'll probably have a reason or an explanation, or it's just her being a high schooler. And so then what happened was he goes home, and Peter texts him and is like, well, why can't you call one of Margot's friends? Mm -hmm. Dave's like, I don't know any of her friends. Like, what do you mean? I'm supposed to know her friends? Like, those are her friends, right? <laughs> and Peter's like, well, who would know her friends? And so you see him pull up the old computer and log on to Pam's desktop in Windows. Mm. Windows. And he goes through her contacts. And this is when she was in middle school. And oh my he sees, gosh. Um, he goes through each name and Pam had put a description for each parent and it says Isaac's mother and it says Isaac's um, Margot's middle school best friend. And so he's like, okay, perfect. So he calls that number, Isaac's mom picks up and Isaac's mom is like, oh, I haven't heard from you since um, 
you know, since Pam passed, but I hope you're doing well. How's Margo? And he's like, well, I don't know what's going on. Where is she? You know, have you talked to Isaac? And she's like, well, I'm sure they don't have reception right now. And he's like, what? What do you mean reception? At school, they have reception. They're still friends? Yeah. And oh. she goes, no, Isaac and his friends went camping today. And I'm pretty sure Margo was invited. They're huh. camping in the mountains. Ooh. And so he's like, what? She never told me about that. And she's This dad like, has very clueless. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and so she starts, you know, kind of being concerned. But she's like, well, I'm so sorry. But uh, if Isaac calls me whenever he gets reception, I'll make sure to let him know that Margo needs to call you right away. And so he goes, okay. And so he waits and he waits. And the next morning... Isaac calls him, but it's not the call that he was expecting. They FaceTime, and Isaac says, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, like, Mr. Kim, I couldn't be more help, but Margot never showed up to camping. She uh -oh. wasn't even at school on Friday. What the heck? Ooh. And so this is when he's like, are you me? Like, are you crazy? Are you kidding me? Like, what's going on? And so he immediately calls 911. 911 is talking to him. You know, he's like telling all of the information that he has. And they said, okay, we're going to get a detective on your case and they're going to give you a call. And he's sitting mm -hmm. around and he's searching and searching and he's trying to think of things to do and trying to call people, going through contacts. Like, he's just losing his marbles. Finally, he gets a call from Detective Vic, who's going to be pertinent to the story. And Detective Vic calls and she says, I'm the detective assigned to your case. Like, tell me all of the details. So he's like getting frustrated. He's like, I already, I already filed it. Why can't you read the file? Like, just help me. And so she's like, I need to know everything. And so he starts talking to her. They come to the house. They start investigating everything. And he, she's like, I need to know everything about her friends. Like, wh who is she with on Thursday night? Like, do you know any idea who they were with in biology study group? And he's like, yeah. I don't know. And he's like, ah, but maybe I can know. And so he looks at her laptop and he tries to crack the code. So the laptop itself didn't have a password. Mm -hmm. But once he entered Margot's laptop, mm -hmm. he couldn't get into Facebook. And he says, forgot password. He couldn't get into her Gmail address. And it says, recover password. Mm -hmm. And he thought, maybe it's Pam's email. And so he checks Pam's old desktop and gets the password recovery. And so he uses all these steps to get into her Facebook. He and got he, in? Yeah. Oh, and shit. starts making an Excel spreadsheet of the picture, of the profile picture, of every single friend, if they're in Margot's contact book, in her laptop, which is probably synced to her phone, what the, their name is, what they were doing Thursday night. Oh my God. When the last time He's they for saw sure Margot architect. was. Yeah. <laughs> last time they saw Margot and their relationship with Margot. And so he goes one by one by one by one. And it <clears> seems <throat> like nobody was that close to her. Which he starts getting confused and he starts, you see him get more and more frustrated. Some people are like, I don't know. I mean, Thursday, I think I saw her maybe Thursday at school. I don't really know. He's chatting with them? Yeah, he's calling them. Calling them one by one by one and filling out this Excel spreadsheet, and you start to get, get see him get so frustrated because he's like, "What the hell? Does Marco have any friends? You know, like no, everyone's just like. I mean, I knew her from school, but I wasn't that close with her. And so he's like, "Did Marco sit with anyone? Like, well, who did who does she hang out with at school? Like, just tell me those names and I'll call them, right? Because the Facebook's friends list doesn't sort by your closest friends. And there's like 300 friends she has. And so he's like, "Just tell me." And then they're like, "She sat alone a lot during lunch." Oh my god, this is so sad. And the dad has yeah. no clue. No. Come on, dad. <laughs> Come on, dad. <laughs> and so, you know, he goes through all of these contacts and he keeps calling and he keeps calling. And Detective Vic calls him and she's like, What are you doing? You know, and he's like, I can send this file over to you. And she's like, That's perfect. Send that over to me. He kind of starts, wants to know what kind of person Detective Vic is. So he Googles Detective Vic and he Googles missing persons case statistics in California mm. and like over half of them are still missing mm. so he's like the odds are not in his favor and he looks up detective Vic and she won lots of awards she helps build rehab centers with ex-convicts and she she does a lot like it seems like she's a good person like she has this Facebook page she has a son who looks nice mm -hmm. and so he's like okay maybe she maybe she knows what she's doing but as a dad he can't help but be overprotective of the over the case mm -hmm. and so he keeps calling and calling and finally he calls a girl by the name of Abigail. Abigail picks up the FaceTime and mm -hmm. says, hi. And he's like, hi, this is David Kim. Um, when's the last time that you saw my daughter? And mm -hmm. she's like, oh, on Thursday, she came to study group. And he's oh. like, oh, so you guys are close. And she's like, no, we're not that close. And he goes, then why did you invite her to study group? Uh -huh. And she goes, 
because I wanted to get into Berkeley. And so it seems like she's not a good person. She invited her because she's smart and good at bio. And she wants a good grade. His daughter is good. Yeah. Mm. Uh. And so he's like, what the hell? And she's like, well, I haven't seen her. Like, I don't even, I'm not even close with her. And they hang up and he starts getting more and more frustrated. And then Detective Vic sends him an email with CCTV footage from a gas station around midnight Thursday night after the study group she's seen pumping up gas into her car and getting onto the highway. He looks at a Google Maps aerial view of the highway and it's leading straight out of town. And Detective Vic says, I don't know if anything weird was going on. I mean, we looked into everything. It seems like Pam, your wife, passed away. Is there any chance she could have run away? And he's like, absolutely no way. That's not my daughter. And she's like, I mean, I mean, she's in the car and she's driving towards... I mean, I don't, I don't know. Does she have family that's out of town that lives near there? Like, is there anything you know? And he's like, well, I don't know. I don't know. And he gets mad and he hangs up. And then a day later, Detective Vic sends another email. And she has really bad news for him. She says, do you know a girl by the name of Rachel Jung? She's like, no, who's Rachel Jung? She goes, well, we found a picture of her fake ID. And it says Rachel Jung. And it's definitely your daughter in the picture. And so... Detective Vic is like, a local forger gave it to us when he got arrested, and she had actually asked for this a couple days before she went missing. Maybe she was thinking about starting her life somewhere else. Is there any indication of that? Did she say anything to anyone? He starts deciding, okay, there's so much about her that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to look into her Bank of America card. And he's like, maybe the piano money had something to do with it? Because if she's going around buying fake IDs that I had no idea of, is this what she's using her piano money for? And so he Mm -hmm. logs onto her Bank of America and he sees that she had been (laughs) depositing $100 a week. Uh And then she sees a big transaction of $2,500 to Venmo. Googling Venmo, he starts asking Peter about Venmo and he's like, the payment service? And they start looking into it. They look up the user ID. The user is now deactivated on Venmo. And he starts freaking out. He's like, why would she send $2,500 to some random person on Venmo? It doesn't make sense. And he calls Detective Vic and Detective Vic goes, okay, let me talk to Venmo. She calls back and says, I talked to Venmo head of security. And they said that that account belong to Rachel Jung. Your daughter sent it to herself. She sent it to herself. Yeah. What? Maybe mm. she wanted to start a new life with $2,500. We don't know. And then she deactivated her Venmo. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, what? This just doesn't make sense. That's not my daughter. That's not my daughter. Mm-hmm. Detective Vic is like, listen, sometimes you don't know your kids and that's not your fault. Because he's like crying, you know, over FaceTime. And he looks like he hasn't slept in like three days. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay. One time, I got a knock on my door. A neighbor came up to me and was asking for her money back. And I said, your money back? And it turned out my son Robert had been going door to door telling them that he's my son and that I had set up this foundation, a charity for moms and dads that are in the police force. And he was asking for donations. And so she's like crying a little bit teary-eyed and he's like laughing and she goes it's not your fault if you don't know your kids fully that's just how kids are and so then he's like kind of teary-eyed and he's like well what did you say to your neighbor and she's like i told her that i just founded the charity and i told her her donation was a great contribution and so they giggled because it's like your parental thing Mm. and so they giggle and they hang up and he starts looking through her internet history mm. he's like maybe i can find a way to get to know her and mm-hmm. so he goes through her internet so history. he's trying to accept the fact that the girl yeah. trying to start a new life and now he's trying to figure out why does she want mm-hmm. to start a new life mm-hmm. and so he goes into her browser history and sorts by most viewed sites and he finds you know facebook your common ones google and youtube <laughs> stephanie sue <laughs> On YouTube, Miss Manga Bot on YouTube. <laughs> and so, you know, he starts seeing this and then he sees a website called Ucast. And he clicks on it because mm-hmm. he doesn't know what it is. And it's a live streaming platform. Mm-hmm. And he clicks on it and he clicks on one of the live streams and it's just two dudes, right? And they're just like cutting each other's hair in the bathroom and everyone's like giving them hearts, right? And then he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Is it Dan Dan? <laughs> it's Dan Dan. And so then he clicks on the next live cast and it's some dude laying in bed talking about nonsense. And he's like confused. And so he types, Can you see me? And then the dude on the live cast is like, How the hell would I be able to see you? And so he's like, Hmm? And so then he clicks. He thought it was FaceTime? Yeah. And so then he clicks on the live cast now button, right? And he mm-hmm. sees himself and he's like, what the heck? <laughs> and so he's like looking and a user by the name of Fish and Chips arrives and then leaves. And then another user arrives mm-hmm. and then leaves. And then he's like, this is stupid. And he exits out. And it says, close cast, saved cast. So he clicks saved cast. 
and video and video and video and video and video will pop up of the saved cast that Margot did. She was live casting. Most of them didn't have views. Some of them like five views. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And they seemed really intimate. Lots of them were just like her on her webcam. And so he starts clicking one and another one and another one. And she's just talking about nonsense. And he clicks one that seems like one of her first ones. Yeah. And she's sitting there and she's kind of just like because she's waiting for people to come in. And this girl mm -hmm. by the name of Fish and Chips comes in. And so Fish and Chips is like, what's your favorite Pokemon? And Margot is like, oh, hold on. And she pulls up her Pokemon keychain. And she's like, well, that's not your favorite Pokemon. What's your favorite Pokemon? And they start bonding over their favorite Pokemons, mm -hmm. right? And then you see that every live cast, Fish and Chips will come in and they'll start talking. And he starts writing down all the information about Fish and Chips. Her mm -hmm. name is Hannah. She's 20 years old. She lives in Philadelphia. And they really bonded over the fact that Hannah was in college, mm -hmm. but was working a full-time job because she had to pay for her mom's hospital bills. Her mom has cancer. And so, you know, they talk about fuck cancer. Cancer sucks, you know, and stuff like that. And he starts writing all of this down. And he writes down every username that I ever joined. You know, there's some usernames that come in and they're like, show boobs or no. And then she'll just roll her eyes. And so he writes down every single one, goes to their profile, tries to find out as much information about them, adds them to the Excel spreadsheet, sends it over to Detective Vic. And Detective Vic mm -hmm. looks into every single one of them. And all of them were dead leads. Including Fish and Chip? Yeah. So Fish and Chip's she was in Philadelphia at the time. Mm. They were able to contact her, but she was in Philadelphia, which is far away from San Jose, California. And then as he's watching cast after cast, because I think he misses his daughter and he just wants more clues because he just doesn't understand how all of this could be a dead end. This is where she spent so much time. Yeah. If anyone knows what happened, maybe it's someone here. Mm -hmm. And so he looks and he looks and there's this one cast of her at a lake. And uh -huh. she says, this is my favorite place to do nothing. And she shows the lake and all the comments are saying like, dude, you're ruining your data plan. Like you are streaming at a lake on your phone. You're going to kill your data plan, blah, blah, blah. Right. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, I just like to sit in my car and do nothing here. Mm -hmm. And she titled that cast Balbosa something, right? Mm -hmm. And so he starts Googling and he realizes, wait a second, the gas station was here. She gets onto the highway that leads out of town. That highway doesn't go anywhere else but out of town, except Balboa Lake is right here. So mm. she would use that highway to go to Balboa Lake. Mm. And so he freaks out and he gets into the car. This is like three in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And he's FaceTiming um, Detective Vic and she's not picking up because it's three in the morning and he keeps going to face voicemail and she keeps leaving voicemails like, please meet me at Balboa Lake, so like, blah, 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 right? And so he's driving, 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 gets there and she FaceTimes him back and she's like, what's going on? What's going on? He's like, you lied to me. She's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you said that she ran away. She didn't run away. And he pulls up her Pokemon key. Chain. And she's like, what? What do you mean? Uh -huh. And so then she's like, I'll be right there, right? And the police are going and she comes and then you see the news playing on the TV or on the computer. And the news said that they are fishing out the car of missing teenager Margot Kim from Balbosa Lake. They don't know if there's going to be a body inside of the car, but they do know that her car is in the lake. And so they're watching live footage of the news, showing them removing the car from the lake, showing the detectives going through the car. Margot is not in the car. Why did he say detective? Because she thought Margot ran away. But that doesn't mean she lied. But she, how could she run away without her car? It's like a hurt parent thing. Oh. He's like upset that he even believed that Margot would run away. Does oh. that make sense? So where did he find the key? He found the keychain um near the lake. Just the ah, keychain. I see, I see, on the yeah. ground. Yeah, and that's why they searched the entire lake and they found the car inside. And so they take out the car, the police go through the car, they don't find her in the car, but they found blood. And so you see the news interviewing Detective mm -hmm. Vic and she says, by the trace amounts of blood that we found in the car, we are now ruling this an abduction. And so they said, we're having search wow. and rescue, getting involved. We're asking civilians, if you guys have the time, this is a huge forest. This is a huge lake. We have a lot of ground to cover. We've so far, so far covered these two zones, but we have a lot more to cover. If you guys can help, you know, all hands on deck. Dang. And then the news ends and you see them searching and searching and the dad going crazy. You see civilians coming out to help search the forest. You see dogs being out, you know, the canine dogs searching mm -hmm. the forest. You see all of that. And you even see, you know, David on the news. They say, how's the search and rescue going? And he says, going good, but, um, uh, if anyone else has time out there, we could use the help. And he smiles a little at the end because it's like that awkward, nervous smile. And then he goes online that night mm -hmm. and realizes that this is trending locally on Twitter. And he clicks on that Twitter hashtag and it's of people wondering where Margot went. And a lot of it is just very strange. You know, some of them made memes about the dad saying the dad did it because he smiled at the end of his little, you know, like, if you guys could help. 
you know mm-hmm. they're like why are you smiling I mean, that is a good assumption yeah and so they are blaming the dad lots of people are blaming uh maybe she was pregnant and she ran away that's like the biggest thing when a teen girl goes missing they're like pregnant duh. right of course nothing else pregnant <laughs> so annoying it like drives me absolutely nuts okay next time a if- Teen dude goes missing. I'm gonna be like pregnant. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just annoying. It's like what? Lots of people are assuming that she's pregnant. He starts looking at these links that are posted on Twitter to YouTube videos, and he sees that girl that was hosting the freaking social or the the study group for bio, and she's posting a YouTube video saying that Margot is her best friend, and she's devastated. He's trying to get caught. He's like so upset because he's like. <laughs> You didn't even, you're Come not even, now. and so she's getting all, he's getting all frustrated, he's mm-hmm. reading through all of these, and he's like, what the hell is wrong with this, like, what's going on, he's getting so mad, and then it comes out that the police found an envelope of cash in her car of $2,500, and so the police say, mm-hmm. we think maybe she had the intention to run away, but maybe mm-hmm. someone got to her before she could, especially at a lake like this, at a time like that, for a young girl, it's dangerous, and so they start looking, and Twitter blows up again, like, oh, no, she probably just ran away like this kid is wasting taxpayers dollars blah 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 and you see this one tweet from a guy by the name of Derek and you already know he's gonna be Derek the douche because his profile picture of is him vaping a bong thingy mm-hmm. wow I sounded like I'm 57 <laughs> okay <laughs> and so he just looks like a douche but it's not even like a cool way like I don't think that could ever be cool as a profile pic don't do it and he says oh that money was from me because I'm her pimp you know how she loved that D Damn. and all the comments were like are you kidding me right now like what the hell is wrong with you blah 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 and so he goes onto his Facebook page starts searching at him and it says that he just checked in or did his geolocation at a movie theater nearby and so he grabs his bags and he runs over to the movie theater and then you see a YouTube video crazy dad attacks teenage boy and you see him in the movie theater lobby punching each other and then he gets a call from detective Vic Mm -hmm. who's crying like teary-eyed right and stressed and she's like you're off the case like it it was a bad idea to even have you help but now you really can't help Mm -hmm. you can't go around punching people just because you think that they might have something to do with your daughter's disappearance like you just can't do it and so he's like no no no, please I, I won't do anything anymore unless you tell me to like please just please let me in on the case right and she's like I can't and she hangs up on him Mm -hmm. and so he's like god what do I do and so he goes on reddit right he searches Margot's case and reddit is one of the top threads that come up on google Mm. there's a whole thread because usually with missing persons cases I get a lot of attention reddit has a subreddit for it Mm -hmm. and lots of people are posting theories you know all of the news articles that are getting updated are updated on the reddit thread usually Mm -hmm. and he sees pictures of the car the evidence photos of inside the car and he sees something a jacket on the driver's side that he feels like he hasn't seen before and so he zooms up on it and it says Finn's hockey and he goes into his messages and he looks and Peter Kim his brother Mm -hmm. has Finn's hockey he's wearing it as his picture and so he goes on to Margot's computer pulls up the text messages between Peter and Margot Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they had some weird text messages it showed that Peter saw Margot on Thursday night he said see you tonight Thursday night when Margo went missing. Mm -hmm. And two days prior to that, he had texted her saying, well, that was fun. And she said, well, I feel so weird about it. And he goes, I know, me too. Don't tell your dad. Don't tell your dad? Isn't that his dad too? No, his brother. So basically that's her uncle. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was... Uncle. Mm -hmm. Oh. And so he starts getting confused and he's like, what the fuck? going on so he calls peter and he's like hey just like come over and he starts calling detective vic she's not picking up and so he googles an electronic store and he hangs up cameras inside of his house and you see peter walk in and they say do you want a cup of coffee and he's like no they make some tea they sit down together and they start talking and david goes so were you close with margo mm-hmm. and peter's like i mean yeah she's my niece i guess mm-hmm. and he's like well how close and mm-hmm. Peter's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And he goes, do you want some honey in your tea? I could use some honey. And he gets up to the kitchen, right? Mm-hmm. And he's putting honey in his tea. Mm-hmm. And David takes out his phone and starts reading, don't tell your dad. And he's frozen. And he goes, well, that was fun. And he starts reading the text messages. And Peter's like, look, I, I can explain. I can explain, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he comes over and they get into a physical fight. Mm-hmm. Another one. And they're fighting, yeah. Wow. He's like, what did you do to my daughter? What did you do to my daughter? Because she's underage. What did you do to my daughter? And he starts choking him. And he goes, weed! 
<laughs> and he's like, what? What are you talking about? And they sit down in the living room and he's like, why would you give drugs to my daughter? Like, what else did you guys do? You know, kind of accusing him of like sexual stuff. Mm-hmm. And Peter's like, no, just weed. Like Margot came over to drop off that one thing that you told her to drop off that day. And she saw my weed and she was like talking about how she smokes weed. And so she'd come over after school and sometimes we'd smoke weed. Yeah, it's weird, but it just felt like she was lonely. And if she didn't do it with me, she'd probably do it with some friends somewhere. And so he's like, why wouldn't you tell me this? Like, what kind of brother are you? And all the while you see on his computer that Detective Vic keeps calling. And so he's like, I mean, I don't know. It just, it just happened. Like she just started smoking and she would open up about her mom and stuff. And so I felt like maybe at least this is somewhat healthy. Okay. And so he's like, what, what does she say about Pam? And so Peter's like, well, if you were there for her, maybe you would know. She says that you don't even talk about Pam. You act like she doesn't exist. And so he's like, what? What do you, I mean, I, maybe, I didn't know she wanted to talk about it. I I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, in a time like that, you're supposed to talk about it first. It's not up to her. And so he's like, well, why did she quit piano? Why did she quit piano? And he goes, she didn't tell you? David's like, no, she didn't tell me. She quit piano because every time she looks at a f***ing piano, she just thinks about her mom. Damn. <laughs> and he hears his phone ringing again, and so he picks it up, and it, he listens to a voicemail he has from Detective Vic. This is, it's urgent, David, call me, we got him. And so he calls, and this is the first time you don't hear it. Mm-hmm. You just hear, like, talking, but you can't listen. And you see him walk over to the kitchen and fall to his knees and start breaking down. And so the brother runs over and is, like, comforting him. And then you see the computer click on the news, and it says ex-convict sexual predator released six years ago um confesses to the abduction of marco and he had posted a three minute video on youtube saying that he didn't think that he would feel guilt for it but he ended up feeling guilty and so he wants to apologize he wants to apologize how marco kept screaming no but he didn't really listen oh and um yeah you think that's and, that's worse? And the police found him after the confession was uploaded. His name is Randy, and they went to his place, guns blazing, and he had already murdered himself. He had already taken his own life with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. What the heck? The police went back to the crime scene at Balbosa Lake. They found trace evidence of his DNA, and they couldn't find her. I mean, at this point, most news networks, lots of people were assuming that she was dead. Like, at this point, like, what can you say? David's sitting there, and he looks like he hasn't slept in years. And he's FaceTiming Detective Vic. And he's like, I still don't get it. They didn't find her. Like, none of this makes sense. And he's, she's like, I know. Like, if you need me, call me. Like, we're always here for you. And he's like, thanks. I'm glad you were assigned to my case. Okay, well, we'll talk soon. And they hang up. And he gets an email from a place called Memorial One, which they do online memorial services. So you upload pictures and videos of your loved one that passed and people that couldn't make it to the funeral, they can share their condolences. They can see these videos and enjoy them and, you know, grieve with these videos. And he starts uploading for Marco. Starts uploading videos of her playing piano with Pam, like young childhood videos. And you start getting emotional again. It ties back to the beginning and then it ends. Mm-hmm. And it says, thank you for uploading. And it's a picture of a young woman that looks exactly like Hannah. Fish and chips from UCAST. The, the same profile picture. And so he pulls up that profile picture and it's the same girl. And so he starts looking for her. He does reverse Google image searches. Come to find out, these are stock photos. Hannah is fake? And so he finds Hannah's number. He pays $50 to get Hannah's number, calls Hannah and says, well, have you talked to my daughter? She has no idea what you cast it. She's like, wait, what's you cast? And he's like, what? What do you do do for a living? And she's like, I'm a stock photo model. So, I mean, do you want to talk to my manager? Are you trying to book a model? Like what's going on? And so he's like, no, I just want to know where you were Thursday night when my daughter went missing. Mm -hmm. She's like, I don't know your daughter. And he's like, are you in Philadelphia? were you in Philadelphia when my daughter went missing? And he's, she's like, I live in Los Angeles. What are you talking about? And so he hangs up and he calls Detective Vic and she's not picking up. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, what the heck, right? And so he gets transferred transferred to her secretary. And the secretary is like, oh, Mr. Kim. Oh, it's so nice to hear from you. Um, mm-hmm. All of our condolences are with you. Like the whole team feels so sad about everything. And she says, you know, we were... We were glad when um, a lot of the time missing persons cases, they don't get picked up, but we were glad when uh, the detective volunteered to take your case. And he goes, what? She volunteered to take my case? And she goes, yeah, yeah. It was one of the cases that was up for grabs and she just took it. And he goes, I thought she was assigned to my case. Uh huh. And she's like, no, I'm pretty sure she volunteered. And so he goes, okay, well just tell her to call me back. And he hangs up and he starts Googling Detective Vic again. Mm -hmm. And the one article where it says, 
detective that helps build rehab centers with ex-convicts. He clicks on it and the picture in the article is her standing with a bunch of ex-convicts as the article says and one of them is Randy. Wait a minute, what is going on here? And so the next thing that you see is him calling the deputy sheriff's office, which is the detective's boss's office, mm -hmm. and says, can I talk to the deputy sheriff? And then you see the live streaming of the funeral, and you see Detective Vic is sitting there when police officers show up and they arrest her. And then you see footage of the interrogation room, and they say, tell me everything. And so she sits there, and as a police officer, she knows how this goes. So she says, my son Robert, you have to understand something. He's not normal like a lot of other kids. He's different. So Robert has always liked Margot. They went to the same elementary school together. Later Who they went to different- Who the Robert? Her son. That went around door to door asking for donations. Got so it. they went to the same elementary school together. They didn't go to the same middle school or high school. And Robert was on a website, UCast or something, and he found her live streaming. And so obviously he wanted to talk to her. And so he made up this fake profile by the name of Fish and Chips. And he started posting and talking to her. They started building a connection, but it just went a little bit too far. He had made up this story that Hannah, you know, her her mom had cancer because he felt like that's how they could bond because Margot's mom had cancer. Yeah. And you know, Margot being the nice girl that she is, very sweet girl, she quit piano lessons, saved up all of her money to give it to my son for hospital fees. That's why she quit piano. And one day she just Venmoed it to my son. And my son felt so bad because mm -hmm. there are no fees, you know? We don't need the money. Mm -hmm. And Margot quit piano for him to give this money to Hannah for cancer. And so he decided to follow her one day to Balbosa Lake that night. He saw her car in the gas station when he was pumping up gas. So he followed her and he wanted to give the money back and explain things. And he thought that maybe when he explained things, she'd be like, oh wow, well at least we still have a connection. And so she was getting high in her car at Babosa Lake mm -hmm. and the passenger door was open. So he opened the door and got in. Now he probably thought that she would remember him from elementary school. She didn't. And she immediately started hitting him and punching him. And then before he could say anything, she ran out of the car and started running through the woods and he followed her. And he didn't want to follow her because he wanted to hurt her. He followed her because he just wanted to explain. He caught up with her and this was near a ravine which is about a 50 foot drop and she just kept punching him and punching him and he just wanted her to stop so he pushed her and she fell down the ravine and he called me and so I showed up and the police say well did you go look for Margot? Did you know she was dead? You knew she was at the down like under the ravine but did you go look for her? And she goes she never said anything. I was calling her name. I couldn't hear a thing. It was a 50 foot drop and it was all rocks. So yeah, I was assuming she was dead. Now, was I gonna turn my son in? No. So I helped bury her car in the lake and I took over the investigation. I made it seem like she was trying to start a new life. I lied about the Venmo. I lied about her getting an ID from a forger. I lied about all of it. Dang. The police are confused, right? And the police are like, well, what about Randy? Yeah. Did he confess too? Like, did you do that? Did you go over there after building a relationship with him? Was it even suicide? And she said, I will protect my son at all costs. He's not made for prison. So she killed him. Oh my god. And so you see all the news popping up, right? Saying that son is going to get a lesser sentence because mom took all the responsibility. Detective Vic, Detective Vic, corrupt Vic, blah, blah, blah. And you see all of this. And then you see live footage of news networks saying that on the way to the police station, they had asked where's the body. And Detective Vic already knew like that she was going in. So mm -hmm. she might as well give them the body. And so she was like at the end of the ravine. And then she tells the police in front of David, it's like, don't get excited. Like, she's dead. Even if she survived the fall, a 50 foot drop, she would have to go in without water for like five days. And David goes, no, just two days. There was a storm three days ago. And so you have a whole set of police cars. Half of them go to the police station with Detective Vic and the other half go to the ravine. To search for the body. And the news station show up and they start searching and searching and they said, oh my God, they're built, they're pulling up a body on a stretcher. And then they see the news drones pulling in footage. Oh my God. And it's Margot laying on a stretcher and her eyes are closed and David's just like kissing her face. And they get into the ambulance and then you see a desktop. And it's on a page for a piano institution. And it says text messages. And it says dad. And it's an incoming text saying, did you get the news yet? And she goes, no dad, I have to wait 15 more minutes. And he's like, did you get the news yet? And she's like, I still have to wait 15 more minutes. And then he's like, well, you're going to get in. You're going to get in. You're so good at piano. You're going to get in, right? She's alive. Yeah. 
And then he goes, oh, by the way, I didn't even send you the picture yet, right? And then he sends the picture, and it's of Margo in a wheelchair, and mm-hmm. the dad, like, posing and smiling next to her. Aww. Right? And he, she's like, ew, I look so ugly. And then he goes, well, I don't think you look ugly. And he says, I'm so proud of you. And I know mom would be too. <laughs> And then, and then, and then the last scene is of her clicking on the picture with her and her dad. And her desktop picture is of her and mo- her mom when she was young. And she clicks on the picture and she does set as desktop. And so it's the desktop. The background is her and her dad. And then she closes her laptop. <laughs> so it's kind of like a happy ending. Yeah. yeah. I think the whole movie message is like, how to be a good dad yeah i feel like it's like almost like finding nemo like (laughs) (laughs) finding nemo yeah very good comparison yeah like like you're in the process of finding learning about your kid and nemo didn't like his dad at first because yeah he didn't understand him dang and then dory can be the robert yeah dang this this story i mean i thought it would be like really scary yeah no, it's like a... It's like a roller coaster now. Yeah. There's so many plot twists. Yeah. Then you start thinking, ew, the uncle's all fucked up. And yeah. then you start thinking, oh no, wait, he's not. And then you start thinking... Kidnapper? Co- yeah, the and kidnapper. And then Robert? Yeah. What and then it's the like, heck? My brain's fried. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a good That's movie. Good. Guys, you guys have to watch it. I mean, like, I know the whole desktop thing throws it off, but it's so good. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Did you cry? I did cry at the end. Mm. That's cute. It was just like too relatable, but also like, it's like so true. And you see like, um, <laughs> let's go start a whole conversation. Yeah, I can relate to the dad though. Yeah, like. <laughs> but then also like seeing like an Asian mom with an Asian daughter on screen, I'm like high key relating too much. I mean, that's like a whole debate in Hollywood, right? People want more representation because you relate more. But then I was like, oh my God, that could be me. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.